Hello? Hello all, it's Kev. Uh, it's been a few days since I've uh, been in front of the camera and uh, I've taken a week off. Uh, I figured out it's been a, over a year since I've taken, you know, uh, a couple of days off. I've been averaging about one video a day, um, every single day for a year. Some days I do two videos or even three. Um, and there was a day skipped here and there, but not too many. Um, so yeah, definitely like, you know, 350, 400 videos in the last uh, 365 days. So yeah, I needed a little time off and, um, you, know, um, you know, with the family too, we needed to, you know, it's very con time consuming. I tend to get a lot of uh, texts, uh, you know, like five in the morning, six in the morning, three in the morning from people in Europe and Asia. They don't really get the time difference thing. You know, like 6.15, I'll be in bed, I'll be like, ding, 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 ding. You know, to turn the notifications off and stuff. But, you know, I like to leave that stuff on because I use my iPad for my alarm clock, too. So I don't like to do the do not disturb thing or turn the notification signal thing down. But anyway, I get a lot of comments and emails. I'm not complaining because, um, you know, this is basically my work right now. Um, I'm home and I'm on unemployment, um, but uh, I still do care very, very much about my company and about uh, my boss, who's uh, not only uh, you know somebody I have uh, you know an emotional attachment to, but somebody who's uh, been a friend of the family and supported the family. Um, you know, went to my wedding and all that stuff. Um, I've known her forever. A quarter of a century and um, I care about her business too so uh, and all of the the young people you know who support themselves and their families and stuff uh, it's a uh, you know it's a really beautiful thing it's a good place um, and uh, you know let's uh, let's keep it you know it's over a hundred years old let's keep the lights nice and strong you know no flickering lights at JJ's so um, now is the time that we're running all these crazy pandemic sales. It's been like the worst sale we've run is 25% off. That used to be like the absolute best we do is 25 off, 30 off, and 50% off of like, you know, really good brand new custom hats like the Madrid and Cyrus and like all these hats that are um, navy or burgundy we over ordered. So we're blowing them out at wholesale, you know, at cost which means we're not even making money, we're technically losing money because we also pay shipping fees for them and overhead and all that stuff, you know. So it's like, yeah, yeah, we, we're not making much profit, we're just sort of grabbing the cash, you know, uh, so we could pay some quick bills, buy the summer hats and just keep investing and keeping everybody paid and, you know, have the company work out. I just probably assume, knowing the boss, that if there's any cutbacks to be made, she'd probably just cut her own salary, knowing her. That's kind of the way um, way it operates at JJ's. Um, so, you know, I'm here answering a lot of emails. Um, they, they also, uh, not only do you guys send me emails, um, and it's funny too, because I don't really even give out my email. I generally tell people to email me through, um, through JJ's. So you just do info at jjhatcenter.com and put attention Kevin in the subject line. I'll get it, you know. Um, we're going to be doing some kind of consultation things where um, people have been, you know, uh, recommending that I do this Patreon page thing. Um, I've been thinking about it. Uh, excuse me, I've got a little dry throat. Okay. I've been thinking that... Um, since I've had so many people ask me for private consultations, um, you know what the Joker says is like, you know, you know, if you got a skill, uh, you know, why do it for free? You know, so I figured that will be the perk that I could give away on the Patreon kind of thing. So if anybody wants to, you know, like donate money to Hats and Guitars to keep us kind of going, you become kind of like a perk a member. You know, you're a member, member. Um, so yeah, you'd be like, you know, part of the crew, not only like spiritually, emotionally, but also more kind of like, um, 
yeah, you have like a little bit bigger piece of the pie in the sense that you're allowed to um, get one free consultation with me. It will be something like a 45 minute talk uh, on Skype, Zoom, uh, what do you call it, uh, FaceTime, any of those things, even just a telephone video call, you know, if that's better for you. Or we could do it on regular phone if you feel that the uh, the video thing is not necessary. It's probably not necessary. You know, we could generally do those things just on the phone because I've done it for years uh, that way. But it would be up to you. So um, we're ironing out the details, but, um, you know, it would be like a tiny little donation type of thing, which would go right back into the channel to keep things kind of, you know, moving like... Uh, get better quality stuff, some nice stuff behind me here. I'm thinking about maybe doing the green screen thing. So like, you know, if we're talking about hat factories, I could just, uh, you know, download a picture of this particular factory or machine and then just, you know, put it on the green screen behind me, and show it really big and stuff. Um, that's something I'm thinking about doing. And also doing a few uh, interviews, um, where where we chat, you know, two people would chat, me and uh, a guy from a, uh, a hat shop or a guy from a hat factory or hat designer, somebody who makes hats, anything like that. So and some of those things require a little bit of money. So eh, that's, you know, kind of where we're going there, you know. Anyway, um, I, I bought these, uh, these LED lights for my guitars. I don't know if you ever heard of these things. You ever seen guitars with that? You know, a lot of the like big rock stars have them. So when you're on stage, all the, the little dot markers, you know, like the, the third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, twelfth fret, they light up. It um, it helps you to orient yourself when you're in the dark, first of all, and it just makes those dots a lot clearer. So when you're trying to, you know, get your positions down, it's kind of more obvious and there's less guessing. It's really good for guys who have like, you know, bad vision, and what's really cool is that it gives you this like little light show. So it sort of, it motivates you. It makes you feel like, you know, there's this little rock and roll laser show thing going on. So as you're playing and you're seeing it, it looks really cool and, and it kind of motivates me. And I always used to have these things on my uh, basses. I actually played bass for nine years, but I never had one on a guitar. So I ordered a set. Um, first I ordered a set of green ones. Um, around December 1st, uh, my wife told me that, you know, Whatever you want for Christmas, let me know. So I was like, okay, I want these things. It was one of the things I wanted. So we ordered them December 1st. We were told we were supposed to get it around December 25th, before before Christmas 20th. Never came. Never came. January's coming. In February, we're exchanging emails. Turned out they, they did send them out, but they got lost in the mail. It's a super solid company. And uh, the person uh, behind the wheel there, her name is Roz, she makes these things and uh, customer service. She was amazing. She's totally cool, accommodating. So trying to follow up. She finally found out that um, it went, got bounced back to her, um, that my address was invalid or something. She went back to the post office, fixed it. Uh, it should be there by February 12th or something. Never came again. They say it's late, it's on the way. So February is running around February 15th, February 20th. Now it's, you know, March. So it's like December, January, February. You know, it's already been three, four months I've been waiting. Still not coming, not coming, not coming. I sent her a couple of emails and then all of a sudden it just comes like a few days ago. It popped up like, I don't know, maybe three, four days ago or something. Um, really cool little tube and stuff and um, it looks a little bit different from the ones I had years and years ago, but I didn't really get it. So I started attaching you know, a little part and I noticed the wire was cut. It was like a little little fiber optic wire. It was cut. Oh, after all that time, it was like four months or something. Four or five months actually. So I let her know, you know. And they were so cool, really cool. She's like, oh, you know, it got sliced in the shipping material. This has never happened before, only for you. Born under a bad sign. So anyway, um, I'm gonna send them back to her and she's gonna fix it, send it back to me. So hopefully soon I'll have these glowing lights, but I did change them to blue. The second set that she made for me are blue. 
and uh, I'm trying to uh, put the blue lights on my light blue guitar. I thought that would be pretty cool. So I do not have them yet, but uh, these are the little batteries that come in it, you know, these little watch batteries. They send you all these extras. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go to the post office, send it back today. That's my story. Okay, now let's get back to the hats and stuff. Let me drink some coffee here. A dry throat. I've been having that lately. All right. Um, here, grab a couple of hats now. Now, summer is ro rolling around now. A lot of people always ask me this question: um, How good is it? I'm going to Arizona. Um, I picture myself in this really cool, rugged, uh, safari western thing. How about uh, an Akubra camp draft or a, uh, a Stetson uh, Pawnee or, or whatever, a Shasta? I've had my, my heart set on it. I've always wanted a Tom Mix or this and that. But I'm going in the hot sun and I'm going camping. It's going to get dusty and this and that. Would you think that would be cool? It's kind of like what you envision. You don't really envision taking like a Panama hat or some crap like that, right? Okay. It's true. Now, um, let's see. I could roll up some pictures here maybe too. Yeah, all right. So, I told most of these people what you wanna do for any summer or hot situation is um, you want a light hat. You do not want felt. You have to remember that felt is fur. It's uh, like a fur coat. Let's think of uh, what it begins with, you know, kind of like a thick, furry pelt that's, you know, really thick, spiky, furry, kind of like a mink coat or something like that, okay? And picture taking one of those, two of those, three of those, four thick, and then, you know, taking just the hairs, not the skin part, okay? Shaving it off, and then compressing it into a felt, okay? So not one layer thick, maybe four or five layers thick of that, that fur coat. Not the, the, the skin and the hide part, only chopping off the hairs. Compressing it as tight as you can, adding other things to it, stiffeners, blah, 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 you yeah. um, know. That's fur. It's a lot of fur, too. It's very, very dense, too. Not only is it fur, it's fur with all the little negative air spaces are gone. It's compressed. So there's no air, you know. I mean, there is, but it's more on a microscopic level. You'd need, like, you know, a good microscope to look at those little holes in the felt. At least a, a very good, you know, like a magnifying glass or a loop and a very good set of eyes. But um, it's dense and it's fur. Um, fur, it's like, that's the warmest. I wish I could just express to you how much you guys are going to sweat in this hat. Um, if you've ever been to like, you know, an outdoor rock concert, kind of a, you know, a festival type of thing with that kind of woodstocky atmosphere and everybody's got bandanas on and they're soaking them in water and just, you know, squeezing it over themselves. It's just, you're worried about sunburn. It's just a horribly sunny, sunny, hot day. There are some people who wear felt hats to that. Um, it's generally because it's all they have and they don't have a straw hat. Uh, let's put it this way. A straw is gonna be a zillion million times more comfortable um, a fur felt hat will protect you. It will definitely keep the sun off of you, but you'll be sweating like, you know, just like you're wrapped in a fur coat and you got a hat on, pretty much like that. Um, maybe not wrapped totally in a fur coat, but it's like taking a mink coat and wrapping it around your head, basically, while you're out in the hot sun. It's not good. Um, I'm gonna say that People do it, and it's not the worst thing in the world, but if you're sensitive to heat, if you've had any issues, you know, with like dehydration, uh, you know, syncope or any of that kind of stuff, uh, you know, lightheadedness, or uh, yeah, don't mess around with it. Um, there are certainly cheaper, cheaper things that you can buy. Um, let's go to JJ Hat Center. Okay, JJ Hat. Welcome to JJ Hatsy. We have a section called the rain section, which is really cool. Now there's um, there's a search on top. I'm just gonna go to rain hats. 
I'm going to put in the word rain. See what it says. Um, you're going to think also, if you're going to put a heavy Western kind of thing, that's going to be kind of hard to pack. My thing is with vacations and stuff like that, I like something soft that you could just kind of, you know, like a cotton bucket or anything crushable. Uh, rain, okay, here's a rain section. Now, here's an interesting hat called the Ocean Breeze. Something like this would be really cool. I don't know if you've ever seen hats like this. Now, this is certainly not as cool as like a camp draft or a Stetson or something. That's a hat made out of cloth. It's like cotton canvas or something. It's got a chin strap for the wind. This is something that you can splash water on. Uh, let's say you, you're just going camping. You might, there might be water there. You're going to the beach. Good for the beach. Um, there's a on the side there's a ventilation it's kind of like a netting there you see it um this is a very very wide brim and you could roll it up into a little cone you could just stick it in your bag uh, without worrying about anything it won't blow away when you're sick wearing it you could stick it in your pocket put it on your back with the chin strap that to me is a good arizona hat oh, come on let me close that oh that's way better right anyway so this thing I think would be great for Arizona. Um, almost any straw would, because in Arizona you're not going to have any uh, any issues with water. Um, there are hats like this that are just simple, inexpensive, like the Aberdeen Rain Safari. We also call this. This is a, like a seventy-five dollar hat, which is basically a downturn safari outback style with the leather bands. This will take rain. This will take that Arizona desert weather too. It's uh, something you don't mind really messing up. Uh, if you're worried about wearing your hats in the rain, excellent hat. This is called a rain hat. It's poplin, just like a rain coat. Um, it's got a cloth sweatband. It's not expensive. And when you don't want to wear your cool felts and stuff, you don't want to get them dusty or wet or sweaty or whatever, you know, get something like this. Um, or, or find yourself a Chinese knockoff of this or something, you know, and use that. Um, that's how I feel. I wouldn't want to ruin, you know, a $200 fur felt and sweat it up um, right off the bat. It's just, um, that's something you do after a long time, you know. But, yeah, don't use um, the Rain Challenger. Here's a, here's a uh, short brim version. Don't use felt for summer, basically. Um, that's that's what I'm getting at. This is a uh, short brim rain hat. It's basically a fedora shape, you know. Short brim, it's got a snap brim, snaps up and down, poplin. Probably about 75 bucks, I think, the rain challenger. Same thing, yeah, 75. They come in black or, or British tan. Uh, it's 35% cotton, 65 polyester, which is kind of like a poplin. Um, you've got things that are like canvas, almost like wax canvas, it feels like. And uh, they're very water resistant. And I think it's it's a cool hat. The Rain Challenger has that cool stingy brim look. It's inexpensive and you could just beat it up. You could just get pour, you know, buckets of ice water on it and you don't have to worry. Um, these things are all right. The worst thing that happens, they get sometimes a little bit like wrinkly in certain areas, but um, they don't like keep getting worse and worse and worse. They, it's just, it happens a little bit, but that's down the line. Um, they're, they're very good hats. I like rain hats. I like cloth pockets. My favorite summer hat is something in the JJ catalog called the Birdie. Um, the Birdie to me is a very fun hat. It's, uh, it's a classic. Let me see if we can find it. Um, you might be surprised that that's my number one summer hat. I have three of them, maybe four, I think. Yeah, this one, the cotton bucket. We don't call it the birdie anymore. Now we call it the cotton bucket. Okay, this is my favorite hat. Um, I could roll it up, stick it in my pocket, put it in my, you know, my wife's pocketbook or shopping bag. It's fine. Um, I've even washed these things. The only problem is no heat, any kind of heat. Um, 
that band could come off and then you have the same hat with no band it's not the worst thing in the world but uh, the bands I think are glued on so it's easy for you know you got to wash them carefully like uh, put it in the gentle cycle zero heat on the dryer or just don't even use the dryer just let it air dry put it into shape and let it air dry on a towel um, and that's all you do no heat um, you could stuff it a little with paper when it's almost dry, like 90%, 80 90% dry, to keep the crown from drying too wrinkly. Sort of form like that, you know, that cylinder shape with some paper, let it dry. Do it when it's like 80 90% dry. Don't let it dry with the paper in there the whole time. Um, I love these. That's a great hat. Um, the only problem is it's not a wide brim. It's a little bit, yeah, it's a shorter brim. Um... Yeah, we have another fancier bucket. I'm I'm not a big fan of these. These are like really classy linen buckets, um, but they're downturn brims. They don't flip up, so it's kind of a, like a high fashion thing. They're on a half price sale. But the fabric is incredible. They're beautiful, but uh, I'm an old school kind of guy. I like this look. It's more like a, the cotton bucket is more like you know handle a cord. You know, stick a toothpick in it. You know what I'm saying? A pair of Pumas with the striped, uh, like, uh, sweat socks and shorts. Hanging out with your friends. Flipping your uh, Italian Icy upside down, you know? You know what I'm talking about, right? You gotta flip the Icy. Coca-Cola flavored ones. Better on the bottom, right? Yeah, it's like that. This is the classic one. Um, it's, a, it's the same shape as the, uh, the Telecoco. We also do that. I'll show you this hat. Another inexpensive hat. This one is made out of coconut straw. Another unexpected, interesting summer hat, but good choice. Okay, it's not coming up. We we'll call it. Let's write. Let's try coconut. I guess we don't call it. The coconut is the is the cool hat. Yeah, this one right here. Coconut classic. Coconut straw is a great hat. We get these from Capus, USA made. Capus is a New York company. They're inexpensive straw, but this is coconut palm straw. Coconut has been around for a long time. Sam Sneed used to wear coconuts with the flat top. Um, the golfer. It's a very uh, iconic, famous looking, you know, hat. Um, Made in the USA. It's a two and a quarter inch brim. It runs a little bit small. Uh, yeah, a little bit small. I'm going to say you have to go up a little bit on those, like just a little bit. And we have small, medium, large right now. But the, it's, it's early, you know. That is a nice hat. Coconuts are the kind of hat that they will crack if you uh, pinch it in the front there. You pick it up by, you know, like, like this. <laughs> There's no uh, reinforcement in there. It's an inexpensive hat. It's not a super expensive hat. But for a made in USA coconut, they're priced well. Um, the styling is great. The finish is great. Here's the thing about coconuts, okay? Now, don't miss this part, okay? Don't fast forward. It's, ex it's very important. Don't steam a coconut. One of these, they also come with flat tops and a telescopic pork pie crown, do not steam them, um, not even a little bit. Um, what it does is it takes the shiny finish off of them and it makes them milky. They get like a cloudy white milky appearance and it's kind of, you screwed it, it's, it's messed up. Like if we steam it, it turns all milky and you know, there's no shine on it anymore. We, you know, we can't sell it, it's like we screwed up. So everybody in the store has to know that and uh, you cannot steam coconuts, don't do it. Um, that's it. Now, if you do accidentally steam it and it gets that white milky appearance, generally you can fix it with the hairspray, you know, like a good shiny uh, stiffener is good. I like to use hairspray. It's the same active ingredient as most straw stiffeners, but it also has a little bit of a shine to it. Um, has a, a slight gloss and a slight fragrance, but I'm talking about very, very subtle. And I think those are both good things um, uh, for your hats. So, hairspray is a good thing. If you screw up, that's what you gotta do. You gotta cover the band, put a little uh, 
you know, a belt around it, like a cardboard ring, cover the band, get the feather off, and spray it down with a nice uh, shiny coat of hairspray. Is it gonna fix it? It's gonna help it. It's not gonna cure it though, but it's gonna, you know, kind of uh, condition it a little bit more. Uh, do not steam them and don't squeeze them in the front, but that's for any hat. Um, generally, people squeeze them in the front, they get cracks, and the, the cracks stay there for a very, very long time, but uh, you shouldn't. You just store them upside down and you will never squeeze it. That's the trick. You guys know that, right? When your hat is stored like this, you never squeeze the pinch because you're picking it up like that. But if you store your hat flat, you're going to pick it up here naturally because uh, you don't think about it, and you're gonna crack the straw. So always, always, always keep your straws upside down. Okay, we're talking about some unusual summer hat choices that are very smart choices, in my opinion. Um, things like the, the buckets the, uh, that I showed you, the um, that very first hat that I showed you that had that wide brim safari look, that's a really nice one too. Um, it's kind of like what they call a Tilly style, but uh, it's not the Tilly. They use these in a lot of uh, kind of uh, movie sets and uh, all sorts of things like uh, um, safari, rainforests, uh, where you know, like a whole group of people need very good uh, protection from sun. Um, they're generally sun hats and rain hats and they're travel hats. They float, they do all these things. They have little pockets inside where you could put stuff. That's what that one is. Uh, let me put the rain. We used to have two or three different models, but now that there's a little bit out of season, we don't have that many. Let me go back to it. I think this is a really nice uh, classification of hats. The ocean breeze. Okay, here's the other color in the ocean breeze. Slate is sold out, okay. Ocean breeze is a three and one eighth inch brim. Four inch crown to low crown. It's got a stampede string. It's made in New Zealand. Uh, this also runs a little bit small, okay. Um, just a tiny bit. It's a three and eighth inch brim. It's got the side vent. It's kind of, uh, oh, by the way, it's by Hills Hats. Hills is a New Zealand company, which is just an extraordinary company. Uh, the quality, you know, every single seam is strong. It's a very big, wide brim, low crown, and it's got a chin strap made out of like a cotton shoelace kind of thing with a, it's got a special bead with the push button that locks, you know, under your chin. You could remove the chin strap if you don't want it or you could you know, temporarily take it out or you could just put it inside the hat, just tuck it inside, or you could use it as a uh, something to hang the hat off your back when you're not using it. You know, just kind of, you know, hang it on your back, poncho kind of cool style. And um, this is something I really dig. I don't think it's the most fashionable hat, but I think it's probably one of the most functional hats. It's gonna keep you cool. You don't have to worry about stuff like, um, you know, is it gonna get rained on like my Panama and get ruined and stuff? But it doesn't have the class and the elegance or the style of, let's say, a hemp hat or a Panama hat or anything like that. I'm gonna say, you know, it's totally pragmatic, efficient and all that. And, you know, generally, you know, we're talking about wearing stuff that looks good. Um, felt is gonna be the one thing I say stay away from. If you have only a felt hat, uh, consider taking the lining out temporarily for this season and also consider getting a cap banu sweat pad to put in the front to keep the perspiration from going through into the felt which is something you cannot ever clean. So if you sweat up a hat and you get a, a ring, you can't get that off. All you can do is get a wider ribbon and cover it if it's in this area. So prevention will be the key. There's something called a cap banu which is, uh, let's see if we could get that here. JJ Kapman, no, no, it's not there. Kapman, okay. 
This is um, something you can do to your felts. It's like a, uh, a little sizing pad, they call it, but it's really not. It's a disposable sweat pad is what it really is. Um, it's got a, a backing. It's just sort of like a cotton, uh, cotton strip, like a disposable sweat band. Now, if you ever have a hat at home that has no sweat band, somebody asked me that. Buy one of these, they're $5, and you stick it in. Um, it might tighten your hat sometimes, but generally after it mats down, it gets a lot better. If it feels too hat, too tight when you put it in, um, cut the ends off. Start slicing it. Cut like an inch off each side. As it gets shorter, you know, it'll still protect you, you know, from here to here, but it doesn't have to be 12 inches long. It As it gets smaller and smaller, it starts to get looser. So, um... Less will be, you know, a little bit more roomy. Um, they are ten and a half inches long, one and a quarter inch width. Thickness is one eighth of an inch. Uh, I don't even think there's a shipping charge. I think they just shove it in an envelope and just mail it out. So uh, this is a really good product, and um, it's the only thing that's going to save your hat. A, if you have no sweatband in there, stick it in. B, um, if you're going to wear your felt hat in the summer and you know it's inevitable your hat's going to get sweaty and it's probably going to get ruined after one season so um put that in stick it in as soon as you start seeing some something permeating through or if you you know you could use it as a preventative before that happens um good deal and yeah remove the lining there's no big deal i do it pretty much to every one of my hats and uh the, i mean there's just no reason why you can't it's like you know, just take it out flip it up pull it out that's about it guys all right all right let's see what we can do here yeah.
Thank you.